Clarissa, I understand that you are helping the elves make these presents if uh, people have, have been one ordered now. Is is it going through an order, basically, if, if this uh, yeah. CVA says you were nice? The first thing that we, we do is we have um, a, a flow that's going to bring in that data, noticing that Sharon's put that record, that response record in our database. Now we need to convert that into a present record and then start getting that ready to go. And then the ELF supervisors use a model driven app and the ELF workers use a Canvas app um, to, to actually go through the process of making the present. Um, so just got a couple of slides to introduce. Um, so of course, yep, we already know who's naughty and who's nice, so let's go making some presents. And this kind of shows the um, the kind of process uh, that we've got going on here. And everything um, that, you, that you'll see in this bit is um, obviously powered by Microsoft Dataverse. And it's really cool that you can have this kind of two-tier system almost of being able to present the model driven app for more kind of like process based supervising tasks um, and also be able to present the like more kind of user interactive canvas app piece as well. So I'm um, just going to briefly touch on how this actually looks in terms of the data model. So what we have is we have a response that comes in. And that response triggers off a present to be created. And that present has different um, attributes, different columns in it, like a, a status and a recipient. And it's also allocated to one alpha at a time. And it's made using a recipe. So this is something that, you know, obviously we're using it for Christmas presents, but the beauty of creating models in this kind of way is that you can look at it and say, oh, actually, you know, what, what else kind of uses recipes and components and ingredients and instructions? You could use this in a, you know, a, a restaurant application, or you could use it um, in multiple different other um, production line scenarios. So obviously it's one of those things that the, the process that you go through to create data models in Dataverse allows you to be really abstract and actually make something that is reusable, which is really, really cool. So enough kind of just talking about it, let's actually see it. So I'm just going to kill my share a second and bring back the correct screen. And we will find out who is our winner of the first person. You can see how many, <laughs> you can see how many nice people we've got. Look at all of these emails that have come through. <laughs> This is amazing, um, but we'll see who is the lucky winner, who actually was the first person to, first nice person to answer our questionnaire. So we've got our, our email that lets us know that a new nice person has filled out the questionnaire. This would be, obviously this is my account, um, but this would be the account for an ELF supervisor. And so we need to click here to kickstart the present. And in doing so, we find Jamie, you're the winner. You're the first, the first person to to fill this out and be nice. So um, excellent. Let's get your present through the system. So we can see that Jamie's present has been requested, and this is obviously in the model driven app. And we've got lots of different areas that we can we can view in the model driven app. And we've also got this thing along the top, which um, if you haven't seen before, this is a business process flow, and this allows us to really easily kind of streamline the supervisor's role because rather than having to look through here and go, oh, well, maybe what do I have to do now? They can just click here and see, okay, the first thing I need to do is I need to allocate this present to a specific elf. So we hit enter, we see we've got a bunch of different elves. So let's allocate this to Bob. Perfect. And send that on to the next stage. And you'll see, you might have missed it because it happened so fast. As soon as I allocated that to Bob, um, the status changed from requested to allocated. And what's actually going on in the background, because of course I can't change this here because it's a read only field. But what's happening in the background is that there are business rules that are built to automatically set the status to the correct status so that we don't end up having you know human error getting in the way of the process 
And these business rules are really, really easy to set up because you just start off with a condition and you can add these different rules to your condition. So in this case, we've got if this present has been allocated to an elf, so if the allocated to contains data and the resource step has not yet been confirmed, then we know that it's allocated. Perfect. So that's come through the system and we can see that here. And then let's have a look at what Bob's experience is. And this is where we come to the Canvas app. So he's got his Christmas present production. Like he's just come in to work for the day to start his shift. He'll log in as himself and he'll see that there we go. Jamie's present needs resourcing. It's immediately come through the system. Um, he doesn't need to, to do anything to, to find out what his new jobs are. He can just go ahead straight away and make them. So let's have a look at the needs resourcing step. So the first thing that, that Bob needs to do is he needs to go and collect items from a stockpile. And what we have in the system is so we've got this stockpile which has all the different ingredients and components that all the elves have access to. And as the elves are going through and collecting resources for the presents, these items are ticking down. So then Santa or all the supervisors can have a check and see what resources they need to get in into the uh, you know into the factory. So currently, if we just have a look at stock amount of metal, we've got 200 and we've got a maximum capacity of 250. And obviously, we need to pick up some metal to make our toy car. So let's simulate Bob going off and collecting all of those items. Perfect. Submit the resourcing step. And you can see we get this nice little thank you message um, for helping to make the present. Perfect. And now it says resourced and we can't go through to the next step because it hasn't been allocated to us and confirmed by a supervisor yet. But what we'll also see if we come into our stockpile is now we've got 199 bits of metal. So this helps us to maintain, you know, keep track of that inventory. The only thing as well, I just got another email, so I'm just going to go up to the top. As a supervisor, I then get notified that Bob has flagged the resourcing step for this one complete. Perfect. So then I would go over to Bob's station in the Elf Factory and I would go and confirm whether, whether that's been completed. So we'll say that Bob did a good job. Excellent. Um, and we can either tick it here or we can just tick it up here. Again, following our business process flow. And we know the next step is manufacturing and maybe Bob isn't very good at making toy cars. So what we might want to do is switch out to a different elf. Let's say Felix. Excellent. So we've submitted that to the next stage. So if Bob were then to refresh, notice obviously Jamie's present no longer exists in his queue. And if we were to log in as Felix instead, now see Jamie there waiting to be manufactured. Once again, we've got all of the different instructions that we need to follow. And so we can go through. And for some reason, I decided to put these in, in great detail because I got too excited about it all. Um, so we'll say, excellent, Felix has gone and made the present. And just as you would expect, we're shortly going to get an email saying, hey, Felix has flagged it, go and, and check up on Felix's progress. And essentially, this is, this is you know, the, the process for the, for the whole system. So we can go and say, yeah, that's been completed. We're going to send it to Cara for wrapping. Oh. No. There we go. Uh, so we're going to send it over to Cara. And you'll see Jamie's present is here. So we've got all these different steps in the process. All of them can be managed by different or allocated to different people and managed by one person who is just going between their emails and the and the model driven app. Just really quickly be able to just flag. Yep, that's been done. That's been done. 
perfect and now we can see excellent that's been flagged and at each step of this process as we're moving it through the business process this status is getting updated automatically and that data can then be reported on so if we confirm this let me come through so we've got one final step which is the packing step and if we refresh we can see that now jamie's present needs packing let's put that through and let's add that to the sleigh so there you go jamie you're getting a matchbox car for for christmas <laughs> and of course there's multiple other you know different different recipes and instructions and all of these are perfectly configurable on the back end so if we were to for example come into here and have a look at recipes we can see that for the diamond ring we've got different recipe components that we need to add in and link to this actual recipe in a one-to-many relationship. So we've got one recipe has many different components or ingredients, and also one recipe has many different instructions. And just by adding in new recipe instructions in here, for example, let's just add a new one, position six, and say, try it on for size. Excellent, save and close. That is now here. I forgot how many I had before, but that doesn't matter. Um, so we can also change the order of these and everything from the back end. And then without having to republish our application, we should be able to see that we've now got a try it on for size, a new instruction here. So you can have your managing stuff and your su supervising stuff actually setting up these tasks in a perfectly easy, configurable way. And then instantaneously, your elves know their new instructions and what to do. So this is kind of the, the power of doing it in this in this way. Perfect. So I believe that that is, um, you know, the, the present production line. If anyone has any any questions about any specific part of um, how that how that works, please go ahead. Otherwise, we can jump to Jesse's part so we can find out what we do with all of this data. Now we've got it. Fantastic. We, we had people in chat even uh, speaking up and saying, you know what, I made an app similar to this to handle the registration and check in for people financially impacted by the pandemic. Gentleman named. Daniel pointed that out, and so he, he made a, uh, a similar app to that. You, you know, one of the things I really love about your demo is it's just fun for one. That was great. But for two, so many times in Power Apps, when we see a demo of something, we only see a Canvas app. How can you do this in a Canvas app, or what can I do in a model-driven app? But you really painted the picture really good about how the Canvas app can be used for those frontline workers or you know the people actually mobile uh, out in the field or something like that while management or administration uses the model driven app many times yeah yeah i think I, I it's bet you really... build solutions like that a lot considering how natural you just walk through that and how they all fit their <laughs> spot and the solution so well well actually this one was my first dataverse solution because I had previously been working with with SharePoint, so I was really excited to to get get to grips with with using Dataverse, and you know it really seemed like this is kind of one of the the reasons for me why Dataverse kind of stands above, you know, using things like SharePoint. It's because you can have that, you know, that that different tier system of having a back end and a front end, so that you can have people who are for example, like the elves on the front line, they're not going to be as tech savvy or have like Dynamics 365 training or anything, and they don't need to. They can just use the the Canvas app. Whereas your people who are a bit more kind of integrated um, with the with the data and the processes, they can use something that's that's you know quicker to, to build, and they can configure it all and and make it their own. 
Yeah, exactly. And it goes back to what we just said at the end of Sharon's presentation on like how easy it is to build, right? You write some code to build your model-driven app. I mean, your Canvas app, you built that from scratch, but your model-driven app, you just configured those screens to meet your needs, right? And that probably went real yeah. quick. I imagine your model-driven uh, development there was, what, one-tenth maybe of your Canvas app development time? Yeah, it's definitely quicker. Yeah. Um, there's there's definitely a and and this again ties back into what Sharon was saying that planning stage is really really important. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, just as Sharon was saying about getting her requirements, for me, producing that that kind of diagram of that data model, that is where the majority of the kind of model driven app time goes is in setting the actual model. And yeah. then once you've got that model, as you say, it's really, really quick. And something that um, I only found out about during the process of, of making these mm -hmm. is adding subgrids into forms so that you can show, for example, in that recipe form, you mm -hmm. saw the, the list of components and the list of instructions. So those are both subgrids in the forms and, and they are really, really fantastic and really just quick and easy to put in and use. So they are they're real nice too because you can put you can put the related information on the same page to put it all in the yeah. context of one spot just like you did it there that was great what a fun app thanks clarissa